G'day, my name's Mark. These are all the offcuts of all my good pallets. So anything with nice colour, their life is not over yet. Start to see all the colours now and you can see why I've kept all of these scraps. Also thrown into the mix, there's a heap of these really thin pieces. They are the offcuts from my press, which is that video from two videos ago. I'll quickly chop all this in half um, so it's more manageable for glue ups and it also takes out a lot of the bows. So I'll do that, I'll bring it back over here and we'll glue it up. G'day. So here are all the different widths of board I have. I'll pluck out all the main ones that are sticking up and I'll rip those with the table saw. Before I even had a table saw, this is what my slabs would normally look like. Now I would have to, I would do the clamp up and I'll be left with this business. Um, I would then have to flatten those with a router. It was a horrible job um, of back and forth or up and down until I got it to a reasonably flat slab. I could then flip it over and do what would be called the good side. And the good side was the one sitting flush on top of the pipe clamps. I'm gonna do my normal routine from now. Just keep in mind that there is other ways to do things, obviously. What I found when making a sled is if you can get hold of some of this angle steel, what that lets you do is have a very low profile so you don't lose router width. You just need two of them. Screw on a couple of blocks on the end. Your router sits in the track. It's held both sides and away you go. You'll just need to box up some rails. You can simply screw something to your old workbench. Make sure it's all level and away you go. Get yourself one of these. Cut it flat. Two bucks. Now I'm not too fussed if I don't get 100% glue coverage. This thing is not at all structural. It is not going to fall apart. But it's type one original, I think. It's got the shortest open time. So no mucking around. Get this bottom edge as flat as you can. That is gonna save you all the grief, no matter which way you are flattening. So don't over tighten your bottom two, get the top on, because this will wanna pull up and ruin your day. Pipe clamps for pallet wood furniture, making a lot of mess, I find them the best. Um, these ones, these are just unbranded eBay. They're about 40 bucks for a set of four. You buy your steel pipe from your big box store, they're about 15 bucks each. So for a hundred bucks, Aussie, you got four clamps and you can do so much with just four clamps. And if you wanna check out my video on how to make big slabs, it's up there. Now have two flat parallel boards, both sides, so I get to pick a good one. I'm now going to chop these up into small pieces. What I'm going for on this display shelf is that waterfall feature. So the width of this shelf will be dependent on how much timber I can get out of this. Thousand and fifty, which I think that'll be more than enough for a display shelf. Okay, so I've cut these miters um, heaps of different ways. This time I'm just going to utilize the fence. What this little strip of three mil ply is doing is just a little bit of an anti kickback device. As the timber comes through, with the 45 the blade tilted over, it is notorious for pinching and firing it back into the gonads. What this does, just raises it slightly. As it finishes the cut, the wood drops down, disengages from the blade, not causing that pinch, not causing the kickback. It's a little bit safer. There are a million ways to cut these, but these little pieces, this is how I wanna do it. Always thinking of new ways to do this. Love to hear what you think would be better for the pieces I'm using at the moment.
what I now have is little waterfall edges. I'm going to glue those together. Basically, it just needs to look nice. Tight bond on the end grain. That's been well and truly proven to be more than enough. I'll glue all these together. And then I will glue all six pieces to make one big L-shaped waterfall floating shelf. Just doing a test run, I'm gonna use two pipe clamps to support the piece, one F clamp, just to provide a bit of opposing pressure. Once the glue goes on, um, these are gonna to wanna to slide away. So I've got no biscuits, nothing in there aligning them. This is purely about getting a nice bond without the slip and slide action. All right, that's, that's as neat. All right, I might do the rest like that because that's super simple. All right, this one, I'm gonna go with just one strip of tape and a heap of rubber bands, just to save tape, because it literally gets thrown in the bin, which is a bit of a bummer when a clamp produces no rubbish. This is going awesome. And why you should always do a test run. Ooh, well, that's a bit shit. Nice and square, nice and straight. So when it goes on the wall, it'll look Michael Mouse. Just working on the French cleat wall bracket. There's plenty of videos out there on French cleats. I'm gonna just glue this one on. It's not really one that I wanna make a meal of. My wall's over here. Here's my hook. It has to hook down like that. That's my test run. Let's glue it on. She'll be right. I'll give this a quick sand, water-based poly, that'll do. I'll throw it up on the wall. How cool is pallet wood? Oh. Also, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, I'm giving this a bit of a red hot go at the moment. So all those subs really help me. Thanks very much for everyone that has subscribed. Uh, and thank you for watching. Plenty more videos up here. Okay, quick thank you to all the punters on the thumbnail. Uh, they are other makers from all around the world. So you can check out their channels in the links below. Uh, they come with my seal of approval as good bastards. <laughs>